Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to put a photograph inside of letters like I have right here. I'll actually show you two different easy ways to do this. And we'll be using this photograph here as our background and this sunset image for going inside of the letters. Now you can use any pictures you want for that. That's just fine. But if you're a member of my channel, I have download links for the ones I used here in this tutorial. Also download for my whole project file over here, right hand side, and a step-by-step -step list to walk you through this project. If you want all of that, that's all part of being a member of my channel. And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And we'll start off with this as our base picture. And the first thing I want to do is just to clean out some of these people in the foreground. They're kind of in the way of the text. So go up here, it says background, right click and choose duplicate layer, choose OK. And then hide that. That's just a safety because we will be changing the image up here. Let's now remove these people using the content aware fill tool. Just grab any selection tool. I'll use the standard lasso tool here. So just make a nice little fast lasso around the screw on the front. Go up here to edit. Come down to fill selection. Have this set at content aware. Choose OK. And that takes care of that. Control D to deselect. If you have somebody with a reflection like that, make sure you get the whole reflection in there as well. Just right around here. There we go. Same thing. Edit fill selection content aware. They're gone, and then Control D to deselect. Notice how we got a bit of a copy here of those people, so we'll fix that. But first, let's get rid of this girl down here. We'll just do the same trick on this. Edit, fill selection, content aware. She's gone, Control D. A little bit of the chair right there. Let's try getting that out. Same trick, fill selection, choose OK. A little left, we'll take care of that with the clone stamp tool. Let's get this chair out of here. Back up here to edit, fill selection, choose OK, and Control D. Let's now zoom in and fix some of these things. I'll use the scroll wheel on my mouse. I have that set up for zooming. Very easy. Hold the space bar down, you can move your image around. Let's just take some of this stuff in here. I'll grab the standard clone stamp tool. Here's my brush size. Hold the Alt key down to choose where you want to copy from, and paste over to copy to. Just a little bit of that. Let's grab some of this stuff in here. Just a real fast fix, nothing special about this step. There we are, and just do some more of that right up in here. If you see anything duplicating, try to go over that like we have this thing here and right down here. I'm gonna just kind of clean that out so there's no duplication showing. That looks good. And if you see any kind of blurry area like that, just grab something and put it over that blurry part. Okay, that's fixed. I'll hold the space bar down, smooth this over here. We're okay through here. The water's kind of weird right there. I'll zoom in again. Let's fix that. I'll just grab some of this coast right here. I'll click and let's just bring that right along that edge there. That's better. And just a bit of touch up in here. Kind of help to blend that all in. Okay. Same thing up here with these people. And lost somebody's leg back there. That's going to be a little bit of a problem, but we'll see if we can fix that. That's a problem sometimes when you're working with the content aware fill. It goes in and it grabs what it thinks is the right stuff from someplace else in the picture. And it may not be the best choice all the time. Let's just do this. Real small and it's kind of messing up. So let's bring our brush size down. That's the left square bracket. Want real small. Grab right here and put just a little bit of a leg right like that. Just a touch. Let's extend this down. And it's probably not going to be showing in the photo. Let me grab that foot, just put a little foot right over here. That should do the job. If we zoom back out, no one's going to see that repair, so that's fixed. Okay, now that the picture is set, our next step is to bring in our text. We'll be using two pieces of text that set our foreground color at black. Go up to the Type tool. And I'm using a real thick typeface here. It's called Gil Sans Bold, which is right there. And I'm also going to be using another one in here, Gil Sans Bold Regular. When you put a photo inside of text, you want the thickest typeface you can find so you can actually see the photo. So real thin typefaces like this really don't work out that well, but real thick typefaces like that work out just perfectly. So I'll be using this one for Miami. Go up here and just click. This makes a new text layer. Now I'm in Photoshop Elements 2024 and that automatically gives me some placement text like that. Just type your new text on top. Hit that check mark. There we are. Now let's grab our type tool come someplace down here. I want to be away from this type or it's just going to reselect that. So make sure you come away from your type, click someplace else. 
and I'll type in Florida. Let's now get our type sized properly. Let's go down to the Miami one. Now this is on top, so I'm just going to drag this layer above the Florida layer so that the sequence over here right hand side matches where they are sitting inside of my image. Under our Miami layer, let's go back here to our type tool. Double click to select it and come down here where it says size. Right over the name, notice how this changes to a finger with two arrows. Click and hold and you can then drag this larger like that. Now I used a little over 300. Just go right here to 308. That's a pretty good size. Also have this center. Let me just double click and show you that. Here's our type tool. Double click. And it's center text. That just helps me get it lined up properly. Let's come down to our Florida. I want to do two things down here. First is make this larger. If you're on the move tool and you triple click, it'll take over to the type tool. Let's set our size to 308, which is what we used for Miami. I also want a different typeface while still selected. Let's change our typeface. And I'll go right here. Same basic typeface, just a little bit thinner. And here's our two type layers. And that's pretty good here. You can see why I've removed that person over here in that chair. And people in behind, they'd be right behind that text and just cause some distractions. Okay, now let's bring our photo in here. I have my photo opened up in the photo bin. Just take it and drag it in and let go. And then it drops it right inside of your project. Drag it clear to the top. As I drag that, notice that real thick line? That's where it's going to be sitting when you let go. So I'll put it right here. Our first technique to put it inside of the text is real easy. Just right click on the name and choose Create Clipping Mask. And it goes inside. There we go. Now with this, I'm on the layer. Notice that light play outline. And notice how it's now indented. That's the way that you know that you're in a clipping mask. I can now take this and move it around until I find the spot that I want. Maybe right about here. Looks pretty good. It's nice and bright and a bit of detail down there. Let's now do the exact same thing. Come down to Florida. I want another copy of that image in here. So back over here, grab that picture, drag it straight up. There's our second copy. I'll drag that above Florida. This time they'll do it a little bit differently. Let's just hide this Miami stuff. There we go. This time, come down to the thumbnail for Florida text. That's where it says T. Hold the control key down, click on that. That selects that Florida text because we clicked on that thumbnail. We're still on this thumbnail because you can see that selection down there. So go up here, hit the layer mask button. That then creates a layer mask in the shape of that text. Now I want to again move the picture, but I'll need to unlock the layer mask from the image. So just click on that little icon right here, little lock icon. They're now unlocked. Double click on this side, look for your light blue outline. I can now move that image around in behind. We'll find a good spot for that. Maybe right down here, a little different than the top one. I'm just hiding this bright spot here so you don't match. There we go. So two different ways. There are reasons why you'd want to use one or the other. It depends upon your project. In this case, either one works out perfectly fine. Let's now show this top layer again. So here's our text. Now it's a little hard to see. So we'll do some layer styles to help separate out the text from the background. First go up here to Miami. On this one, we'll put our layer style right on the text layer. Go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings. Let's do a stroke first. Set the color to white. Click on this and set this to white. Click in here anywhere, drag upper left hand corner. That's our white stroke. Let me just bring this up to a good size. I used 13 in my example. And the position is outside. Now you have three options on the position. And that's where the stroke goes. Here's outside. Here's inside. It's inside the letters. And here is center. Kind of splits the difference. Choose the one that you like the best. It's a personal preference. I like seeing the whole lettering in there. So I put mine outside. Let's now add the drop shadow on this. Now I always do the drop shadow second after a stroke. And you'll see why in just a second. Mostly because the drop shadow comes in behind the stroke. So you want to be able to see where that is. Let's adjust our lighting angle. I'll put this at 125, kind of upper left hand corner. Let's set the size here at 7, which is the default. Let's set the opacity all the way to the top at 100%. And then pull your distance out like this. And you'll see the shadow begin to poke out right back in there. There's our shadow. And what I used in the demonstration was 28 for the distance for the drop shadow. Okay, that's good. Choose OK. Now go up here where it says Miami. Right click on the name. Choose Copy Layer Style. Come down to this layer here, the one that has the layer mask. Right click on the name here and Paste Layer Style. And it puts that layer style on here. If you need to move this for any reason at this point, come in here and click back between the layer mask and the image side. So you get that link again. 
can then move this around. Now, what you're seeing in the background back here, that's this layer underneath. I'll just hide that layer, and that's now out of the way. So don't forget, if you want to move it, make sure you just relink that again. And that's now looking good. Now, I want to recolor the background to give a bit more of an older look to it, kind of a 50s look, and also warm it up a little bit. And that's down here on the background copy. So let's change the color of this. Just a little tweak. Go up here to Layer, come down to Adjustment Layer, and Photo Filter, where it says Use Previous Layer. Check that. Choose OK. That just links it onto that one layer, just like we did up here. The default is the Warming Filter 85. That's what you want anyway. And I have mine set at 38%. I'll just type that in. And there's before and there's after. It's just a little warmer and more of an older style look on that image. I think that looks real nice. There we go. I also want to increase the contrast on that just a little bit. Maybe the saturation as well. We'll do the contrast first here. Leave the layer where it is. Go up to Layer. I'm down to New Adjustment Layer. And let's do Levels versus Use Previous Layer. Check that again. Choose OK. Here's our Levels Control. Now to improve the contrast, you move the left and the right side sliders in. The left side darkens the dark. So you can see that right there. Now I have mine set at 22. The right side lightens the lights. There it is, just increases the contrast. And I have mine at 238. And you can control your midtones right here. Let's just bring our midtones up a bit. That lightens everything up. Going just a little bit more faded on that. Gives it more of that old fashioned look. And then close that down. Let's say you wanted to adjust everything in your image, maybe add some more saturation to the whole image. You can do that. Go up here to the very top. And let's put an adjustment layer above this. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer. Let's do Hue Saturation. This time, don't check that. Choose OK. This will now be applied to everything in your image. And I just want to increase my saturation a little bit. Pull this to the right. Up here, I have mine at 27 in my example. So there's before, there's after. Just a little bit more saturation on the background and in our foreground lettering. Now, one last little tweak if you want it. I'm looking at the lettering up here where it says Miami. And that little dot in the middle of the A, that's kind of bothering me. There's also a dot in the A down here that's not bothering me as much, but this one's bothering me a lot. I want to fix that. That's pretty easy to do. Let's just make a new layer up here. We have our color set of white, left-hand side. Grab a paintbrush. Give yourself a real small brush. Mine's already small. Come right on top of that dot. Put a dot right there. It just hides that little bit. If you want to, you can do the same thing on your lettering down below. Just hide that so they match. I'll use Control Z to take that one off again. Let's now compare this before and after. Let's come down to the original background layer down here. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. Take our duplicate here, drag it clear to the top. Show that there's the original. And there's our new postcard style. Original and our postcard. If you want this working file over here, and if you also want a step-by-step -step set of instructions for this project, you can get all that if you're a member of my channel. You'll find that in the project guides section inside the photo guide. And to become a member, if you aren't already, all you have to do is just pick up the photo guide and you're automatically a lifetime member of the channel. It's a great tool for working with Photoshop Elements. It helps you answer all those questions that come up as you're working on projects. If you forgot something, look it up there. Real easy to use, interactive help file. And I'll put a link for that right there and also in the description. If you want to help me make more videos here on YouTube, consider sending me a thanks. And that's the thanks button right down there, bottom right hand corner of the video. Make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe as well. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon to get notifications of when my new videos go up. And I'll see you next time.